In this video, I'm making a modular tombstone fixture for the Pocket NC. This easy to make fixture provides new mounting options while allowing you to mill multiple parts at once. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Today I'm sharing my new fixture, but first let me give you the backstory on this thing. Now, milling on the Pocket NC is a lot of fun, and in many regards, it's unique and specialized machine that, with its five axis, can mill parts that my other machines can't. But one thing that it does lack in is the milling envelope. That's the area or volume that the machine can mill. Spoiler alert, I heard somewhere that they're working on a new model with a larger table, and we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, while they do offer a couple options like direct to table, ER40 call it, or with their custom table vise, anything more than that and you're on your own. While doing research and trying to figure out how to get more options from the machine, I came up with the idea to make a modular T-Rail design tombstone fixture. While a tombstone is nothing new to the milling industry, they have lots of designs which allow you to hold multiple pieces of stock or irregular objects for multi-axis milling operations. It's pretty cool. And Heck, folks have even made them for the Pocket NC, so while this project isn't original, I believe my design is unique in a couple of ways. One, it's based around a T-Rail extrusion which provides a number of mounting options for your stock. And two, it's easy enough for just about anyone here to fabricate and build yourself. It doesn't require a large volume multi-axis machine. That said, by making a modular tombstone for the Pocket NC, it should allow me to mass produce some of the production runs of small items that I need to support the Arcader handhelds. With that, let's dive into the design a bit more. The main concept here was while most tombstones are milled from billet aluminum, the volume required to mill them is pretty big and as such, the cost to have one milled is equally high. My thought was rather than milling it from billet aluminum, a quad T-rail extrusion could be used as a tombstone to save lots of money, offer lots of options, and still be rigid enough to handle the forces of this machine. So that's what I did. Over in Fusion 360, I started a new design by sketching the base as it would attach to the platform on the Pocket NC. After deciding on the general mount points, I pulled in the profile for the T-slot quad extrusion. And from that profile, I added a riser to the base for two reasons. One, to provide clearance, and two, seal the internal cavity so that we can add dampening material later on. My thoughts may be that that hollow cavity may cause noise or resonance, and filling it with epoxy or some other medium may help with that. We'll see. Okay, the base is designed to support a 75 millimeter piece of the extrusion. On the top side, I added another cap to seal that hollow center and then bolt it all together with 80 millimeter cap head screws traveling through pilot holes that are built into the extrusion. With that done, while you could use any standard T-slot nuts or fixtures on the device, I wanted to create a few super low profile sliding jaws for the T-slots. And for that, using the extrusion profile and adding a minimum tolerance, I created a hard and soft jaw profile. While all jaws have a threaded three millimeter grub screw to lock them in place, the hard jaw also has a grub screw running parallel with the vise to push against the soft jaw and lock the stock in place. With those finished, I added joints to the design to provide accurate range of motion to the moving parts. When the tombstone was complete, I saved it off. Then using a duplicate B table model, I linked in the tombstone for people to use for setup operations of their stock. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Before that, let's mill these parts. To do that, switching over into the manufacturing section of Fusion 360, we create a setup and operations to mill the parts. For the base, I run several operations using an Amana Tools quarter inch single flute ZRN coated flat end mill. I run a facing operation, then an adaptive clear, clean up the contour, and then cut an external profile, leaving tabs to hold that part in place. Next, I add a few operations to add countersinks and holes for the cap head screws. These were milled with a Kodiak cutting tools, eighth inch, three flute, flat ZRN coated end mill. Finally, I ran a chamfer on the outside edge using a Kodiak cutting tools, 90 degree, four flute chamfer end mill. For the cap, I added a rough and contour operation using that same Amana tools, quarter inch, single flute, ZRN coated flat end mill. For the hard and soft jaw operations, I just ran a simple contour using the same Kodiak cutting tools, eighth inch, three flute flat end mill. And with that, all operations were post-processed and ran on an MTech DM500. This machine was a recent local find, and you may see a review of this in an upcoming video. It's pretty amazing. To fixture these parts, I used Neato tape and one millimeter plastic to bolt the stock to the platform. This gives me some wiggle room should I go through the bottom of the stock. Next, I ran the roughing operations using the quarter inch end mill on the part.
followed by running the countersink and holes using the eighth inch in the middle. Finally running the chamfer on the edge. While the finish on this part is perfectly smooth, the tool marks have to go and we'll deal with that later. Next I ran through the rough and contour operations on the top cap. Piece of cake. Finally I ran 8 hard jaws from aluminum and 8 soft jaws from white delrin. I hand drilled all the holes in the jaws using my Nova Voyager DVR drill press. While this DVR press has tapping modes, because they're all M3s, I didn't feel comfortable enough to rely on the machine's load detection to prevent it from breaking that tap. For these, they're all threaded by hand. Next, I cut a 75 millimeter length of the T-slot quad extrusion. And then back at the bench, using a little tap magic, I hand threaded the holes in the base with an M5 tap. This is what all the parts look like, raw from the machine, ready for a little finishing. For that, I pulled out my little sandblasting cabinet to get rid of the milling tool marks. This took a few minutes and put a nice matte finish on the parts. This is the same technique I used on my aluminum handheld arcade. There's a whole video on that if you're interested. To put my logo on the top cap, I used Surmark to laser engrave the aluminum using my 40 watt laser. With all the parts ready, it's time to assemble. Before we do that, let's take a quick break. This video is sponsored by Altium. It's the software that I use to design my project circuit boards. If you haven't taken a chance to download a free copy and see what you're missing, I've put a link in the description. And with Altium Designer, creating these products is a piece of cake. It's fast, accurate, and fun to use. The efficient workspace has some of the best features in the industry, and through all phases of your development, you'll be empowered to do your best work as you grow into its more advanced capabilities. The link below will give you a free trial version of the software, so you can check it out and see what Enterprise Class ECAD feels like. Now let's get that thing assembled. With the parts in hand, the extrusion cap and four bolts are screwed into the base. Then jaws are added to the T-slots. During assembly, the jaw grub screws are adjusted to compensate for a slack in the channel. I test fit a block to confirm the functionality and then add the remaining jaws to all four sides. With that, the fixture is ready to mount on the pocket NC. Taking it over to the machine and adding the four mount screws firmly secures it to the table. So the way it's designed to be used is to lower the bottom soft jaw to the desired level and lock it into place with the grub screws. The stock is inserted and the top soft jaw is moved down to make contact with the stock. The top jaw is then locked and the slide grub screw is used to clamp the stock in place. Once clamped, all soft jaws can be locked in place as well to prevent any movement. Not bad, right? It's easy to build, looks nice, and has a ton of options to fix your multiple parts on the Pocket NC's table. Now, this setup will help me mill the large batch of brass buttons for my Arcader handheld kits. So, expect to see that video coming to the channel soon. Well, that's going to do it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at making an easy to build tombstone fixture for your Pocket NC. Let me know what you think in the comments below. So if you want to support my work, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell. It'll keep you in the loop when new videos are released. If you like this particular video, give it a big thumbs up and let me know this content's useful. Leave a comment below if you have questions about this project or the Pocket NC. And lastly, check out DIY.engineering website. There's lots of stuff over there. In the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also, allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too. Also, big event this month. The channel has reached 20,000 followers. A big thanks to you, and to help celebrate, I'll be having some giveaways, so stay tuned for the details.